Good morning and welcome back to Science Farm Live. Can you believe it's Wednesday of British Science Week already? We are here uh, at Education HQ, which is on the edge of the beautiful Peak District today to try and answer what an age old question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, absolutely amazing to have 62,000 of you in our virtual classroom today from schools across England, Wales, Australia, Ireland and the Isle of Man as well today. Fantastic to see all of you with us today. Just a reminder, we'd love you to tweet along with us today. Our account is at NFU Education. So we'd love to see some pictures of you having a little watch where you are in your classroom or at home. That would be fantastic. And a reminder, as always, you can ask questions in the YouTube chat function. So if you've got your questions, we'd love to hear from you guys. We've got lots already in advance. I'm already being upstaged by an incubator over here, but that's absolutely fine. That's a vital bit of equipment for our session today. And it is great to have you with us. To start off with, I'm going to give us a few shout outs. Um, so let's have a look here. We're going to have a quick look on our questions and shout out slide that I'm getting from the great guys at Encounter Edu. Oh gosh, we've got so many from you guys today. I'm so excited for this session. So first shout out, huge shout out to Settle Primary School, Miss Entwistle and Mrs. Ambrose. Hello guys, we miss you. Um, we're really excited to come and give you guys your Farm Invention Prize later this year as well, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Uh, shout out to St John the Baptist School, Dingwall Infant School, Wessex Primary School, Hedgehog and Rabbit Class at St Andrews CE. Lovely to have you with us. Oh, I forgot to mention here as well, if I'm shouting out, I'm hoping you're cheering loud and that everyone in your school can hear those cheers. Uh, Rabbit Class at Stouting Primary School, Wellington Primary School in Hertford, oh sorry, not Hertfordshire, Herefordshire, two very different places there. Elm class and Ebony class at Westborough Primary, Year 1 and 2 children at Bardney Primary School, St Peter and Paul Primary in Wolverhampton, and Fox's class in Middlefield, Pri oh, sorry, not Midfield, Midfield Primary School. Make sure you've got a loud cheer now, I've finally got that pronunciation right for you guys. Fantastic, well let's crack on and uh, find out about what we're learning about today. So, we have been looking, and I hope some of you might have been looking at this as well before this lesson, about something called life cycles. So every animal, every creature will have a life cycle and some life cycles are really long. It might last for hundreds of years. Some humans can go from being a baby all the way to over a hundred years old. Some life cycles are really, really short and might happen in a number of minutes or hours, especially if you're looking at really tiny things like microbes or bacteria. So huge variation, but today we're going to be looking at a very famous life cycle. As I said, it's a question that's been as old as time, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And I am absolutely delighted today to be with our resident expert. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, the puns are just going to keep coming today, guys. I'm really sorry about that. But I'm so happy to be able to hand over to Debs, uh, who runs Education, who's going to tell us all about what she does, all about her eggs, chicks and chickens. Over to you, Debs. Thank you, Josh. I hope you're not going to be cracking <laughs> yolks today, <laughs> no. dear me. So what we're going to look at in our session today is, like Josh mentioned, life cycles. And we're going to pick the thing that I know about best, which is the life cycle of the chicken. So what I've got here, sitting in my shoulder here, is Missy. And Missy is our um, fantastic school's chicken. And she is a well bar chicken. And what I've got in the other hand is a well bar egg. Okay, so this is our egg and this is our chicken. So she didn't actually lay this egg, but it's from the same kind of chicken as she is. And what we are going to be looking at in our session is how this egg can at some point turn in to a chicken like this. Okay, so we're going to start off then looking at the egg talking about how we get to an adult chicken. So Missy's an adult chicken, she's a grown up and she lays eggs herself, okay? And this is an egg that's come from a bird the same as Missy. Now, to get from the egg to a baby chick takes 21 days, 
but I think Josh is going to talk through a little activity that you're going to do before we get started on that. Absolutely, I am. Fantastic. So, on your screen in a second, you are going to see an activity, a set of cards that, fingers crossed, your teacher has printed off for you, but if not, you can have a little look. So, can we have that up on the screen, please, amazing tech team? So you've got four cards, a chicken, an egg, a chick and a hatchling. What I'd like you to do at the moment is just have those cards around somewhere handy for you because as you're listening to Debs, I want you to think about what order this life cycle is going to go in. So which is going to come first, which one is going to be at the end and just have them nice and handy. And once Debs has finished talking, I'm going to, we're going to go through together and see if you've got the answer right. So cards at the ready. Back to you. Thank you, Debs. Thank you. So if you have a go at putting your cards into order now, and then whilst I'm talking, you might get some better clues about what we're going to be looking at. So three weeks, 21 days of putting an egg in the incubator is we get a little chick out. So what we're going to have a little look at now, okay, is the different stages in between an egg and a grown-up chicken that can lay eggs like Missy. Okay, so I'm gonna put the little egg down and I'm gonna put, Missy can stay there and I'm just gonna go and get a chick out of this cage here to show you something about it. Come here, sausage. Good girl, Missy. That's it, okay. So, turn around, Missy, that's not your best side. Okay, so Josh and I have just been to pick up some little chicks out of the cages, okay? And we've picked out two Vorwerk chicks, so they're the same breed as each other, but they're different ages. The one I'm holding is two weeks old, and the one Josh is holding is one week old, okay? And we're just going to see if we can see any differences between them. So if we try and put them a little bit yeah, closer Yeah, they're a little together, bit wriggly, aren't they, Debs? Yeah. <laughs> you can see, <laughs> you hopefully, you jump can away. see that they are the same colour. So they're the same breed. They've got orange heads and black bodies. But if we have a look at the wings, look at the wings on mine. If we can have a look at that nice and closely. Can you see on my one, it's got long wing feathers and they've really grown very an awful lot. If we look on Josh's one, which is only a week old, the feathers are much smaller because they haven't grown as much yet. So I don't know if you can just let the children <laughs> see the difference in size. So Josh's one is one week old and my one is two weeks old. So in a week, they've got nearly twice the size. Look at that. Okay. You can see the feathers on mine have grown and it's whole body is much 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 bigger okay so that's a really important part of the life cycle is that our babies grow and as they grow they get more and more grown-up things like proper grown-up feathers and they get much bigger okay what we can also have a quick look at I'll just pop mine back just for a second if we can have a quick look in this incubator down here now we've got two incubators set up today we've got one in the barn with us here and we have got another one tucked away in the office and if you have a look in this incubator this little chick here who's looking very sleepy indeed actually hatched out sometime in the night it wasn't there when i went to bed and it was there this morning so this is a hatchling and this little chick has just come out of its egg. You can probably see the broken egg. It's that blue egg in the middle. So that one came out in the night and not only is it really, really small, but it hasn't got any of the feathers on it yet that Josh has had. It's still just fluffy and it's very tired because hatching is so such hard work. Oh, it's awake again. <laughs> it's having a little wobble round. It's work learning how to use its legs, but it's still re oh, gone to sleep again. And it's awake again, and it's gone to sleep again. So this is what they do when they're really tiny. So this one in the incubator, still keeping warm, is a hatchling. Josh's chick 
is a week old and the one I was holding is two weeks old. So in that time, they've grown an awful lot. They've got feathers on them, their bodies have got bigger and they're all making that journey to becoming a grown-up chicken, okay? And that journey from being a little hatchling to being a grown-up chicken takes, on average, about five months. So from being born to being a grown-up chicken that can lay eggs, five, six months, depending on the type of chicken. So it's not very long, is it? Okay, it wouldn't happen in a, in a human baby. We can't be a grown-up in five months. But in chickens, they grow so quickly but in five to six months, they're grown up chickens. So I know one of the questions that lots of boys and girls have is how do we turn the egg into the baby chick? And you can see that I've used a machine called an incubator, but we're also gonna have a look at how the chickens do that, okay? So we're going to have a little look at Missy. We'll have a look at what she looks like compared to her babies. And you can see Missy's a very tame chicken. She likes sitting on my shoulder and is quite happy to stay there. But we'll have a little look at Missy. Okay, so Missy's a grown-up chicken. On her head, she's got a little red comb. And under her chin, she's got little red wattles. Okay, and you can see these are all her grown-up feathers. All right, that the little chicks were starting to grow, but she's got her full set of feathers on her body now, okay? But she keeps her eggs warm when she wants to hatch her eggs. She doesn't use a machine or an incubator. She uses the warm of her body, okay? So she's actually got, I'll just turn her over, a little patch of skin here. Yes, you can come out in a minute. On her tummy. <laughs> <laughs> where there's not very much skin here. So when she lies on her eggs, here's one I prepared earlier, she puts the eggs on that bit there. Can you see how they're all covered up in the feathers now and snuggled in? And she keeps those eggs warm using her tummy. It's also really important that the eggs turn whilst the chicks are growing inside them. And she doesn't use a motor for that. She uses her feet. So when she's sitting on the nest and she's all cuddled in, she will use her feet just to wriggle the eggs just a little bit, just to turn them round. So she keeps them warm using her body and turns the eggs using her feet. And she sits there on her eggs for three whole weeks while she's doing that. Now I'm gonna pop Missy back on my shoulder. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to show you my other very special chicken who loves to come into classrooms and meet boys and girls when we can. And this is, she's a bit noisy, this is Suki the Silky. And everybody loves Suki the Silky. <laughs> and Suki the Silky is a type of chicken, shh, shh, madam, called a Silky. And can you see her feathers look quite different from Missy's, don't they? They look like fluff people think i've brought a rabbit with me sometimes okay <laughs> except it hasn't got the right ears so she's got instead of the comb on her head she's got a fluff of white feathers okay instead of having normal feathers on her body she has these fluffy feathers she's got some kind of normal feathers on her wings okay can you see those but the great thing about silkies is they have blue skin so if i turn her and show you her tummy if we can zoom in on that a little bit, maybe, if I can find it. Shh, shh, shh. Can you see that patch of skin there? There we go. She's got a patch of skin on her tummy where there's no feathers. And that's specially designed to put the eggs next to. Let's get my egg. Whoop, put it next to there to keep those eggs warm. So chickens keep eggs warm when they want to hatch them using their body, their skin, and turning them with their feet, okay? But we don't tend to use chickens to keep all our eggs warm. We use a machine. I'm just gonna pop Suki and Missy. Are you gonna stay there, madam, or are you gonna go down she's on the floor? She's just comfortable up there. Yeah, there. she's fairly chill. No. Do you wanna go on the floor and have some food? No, we'll stay up there. <laughs> she can go down on the floor if she wants to. She likes sitting on my shoulder, so she can stay there. 
So what we're going to... Oh, no, we're off. There we go. <laughs> Feral chicken. So what we're going to do now is have a little look at the incubator. Okay. So what we've got here is one of the incubators that I use. Okay. And we're going to have a look at some of the engineering, some of the features of this that kind of mimic what the chicken does. Okay. So if you remember, the chicken has to keep the eggs warm and has to turn the egg. So let's see how we can do that using a machine. Okay. Well, clearly it's plugged in, so it's using electricity. Okay. And if we take the lid off, I'm not sure you can hear it, you might be able to. What we've got in the middle here is a fan and it's blowing air onto the eggs. And these orange cables around the outside here, they have electricity going through them and they get hot. So the cables get hot from the electricity and the fan blows the warm air onto the eggs in the incubator. So that's what's keeping them warm. There's a special computer in the top here and the computer is telling the incubator how... The computer is telling the incubator how warm it needs to be. Okay, so that's what's keeping the eggs warm. But I said they needed to turn as well. So let's see how we do that. Okay, I'll just pick it up a different way. In here, we have a motor and the eggs sit on this tray. But the tray, can you see the cogs fitting together here? Okay, so the cogs fit together here and then when the incubator makes this noise and you see that motor is turning at the top and it's turning this disc and it would be rolling the eggs to one side okay and then 45 minutes later the bell goes again allegedly okay hang on there we go and this time it's rolling the eggs back in the other direction okay so our incubator they're doing a grand job down there aren't they our incubator is doing the same job as the hen was okay it's keeping our eggs just at the right body temperature and it's turning our eggs for us okay so this that's the job of the incubator that's the, what an incubator does they come in all different shapes and sizes some of the incubators i use take 250 eggs in them but they all do the same job turning the eggs and keeping them warm thank you josh um i definitely know that one of the questions that some of the boys and girls have sent in has been asking about how if i know there's a chick in the incubator now i don't know there's a chick in the eggs are they having a lovely time on the floor there they're just trying to destroy the next segment at the moment. yeah you, what you can't see in front of us is they're going all over the place it's all right but right. it's all they're right they're having wild. a great time aren't so they? what we can do if we want to make sure there's an egg in our in a chick in our egg okay without waiting three weeks because i'm a little bit impatient we can use some fantastic technology to show us what's happening inside the egg before um the chick's born a bit like mummy's and daddy mummy's going for a scan to see see the baby inside the tummy first we can have a little go at doing something a bit like that <laughs> don't worry about them okay so what i've got here perfectly prepared is i've got something called a candler okay and the candler has got a bright light at the bottom shiny through can you see that on the camera yeah that's got a bright light okay and we can put the egg there all right and you can even see in the daylight in here the light shining through it so what we can do is put our egg in the candler put this lid on and then hopefully with the wonders of modern technology by the magic of television my magic of television <laughs> <laughs> hang on just give me a minute to get it okay. set up oh i'm excited to see inside Des. right hang on just let me get it the right way up right I want it that way up. So I hopefully. Ooh, oh wow! Fantastic. Bit of a time lag. Give me a minute. Ooh. Hang on. All right. I just want to get the egg facing the right way. So we can see there that an egg. There we go. That's perfect. That has not been in the incubator. 
Okay, so that egg's not been in the incubator. Okay, and it looks a little bit like the sun, doesn't it? It's glowing a bit like the sun and the light's shining all the way through it. Okay, so if I want to have a look to see if there's a baby inside any of the eggs I've got in my incubator, we can use this candler to do that. So over here in this incubator, if we can just have a little look there, can you see that we've got some white eggs in there? Now, these eggs uh, have been in the incubator for two weeks. Okay, so next Wednesday, that gets us to three weeks, doesn't it? Next Wednesday, <laughs> they're due to hatch. So I'm gonna take an egg out of the incubator. Can I give you that one, Josh? No, you can indeed, okay. I'll keep it safe. I'm gonna take this one out of the incubator. I can always put the girls away. And I'm gonna put it in the candler. I don't think we need to put them away, Debs. They're no, having they're far fine. too much fun, aren't they? Look at them. Okay, now then. Let's just wait till that lid goes on. Wow. Now, we can see, I'm just going to straighten it up a little bit. There we go. We can see that what we can see inside this egg, okay, looks very different than the other ones. Okay, I'm going to turn the egg round slowly. And can you see it looks quite dark inside? The light's not shining through this one. And if we're lucky, let's just turn it around a bit more. You can see it looks maybe a bit reddish coloured and that's the blood vessels. I'm just gonna try and see if I can turn the egg enough so that we can see the baby moving inside. Oh, Suki's trying to help you. Let's see if she wants to come. I'm just going to put the lid back on. Suki the Silky. Suki the Silky. A bit of a diva. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have her any other way. No. Okay, so that's what the egg looks like when it's dark inside it because it's got the baby growing inside the egg. Okay, there's a bit of straw in there as well. So can you see how dark it looks? Unfortunately, this little baby's not having a wriggle. Oh, there it is. It's moving a little bit. Oh, wow. If you can see just above the yellow bit at the bottom where it looks really bright, if you look just above there, you might see it kind of flickering a little bit. And that's the baby chick. Oh, yeah, I can see it, Debs. Yeah, that's the baby chick moving in the egg. Sometimes they dance around more than others. It might be having its nap time. <laughs> okay, let's move it back just a little bit. Mm, yeah, so that's that's what we do with candling. So instead of waiting three weeks, there we go, it's moving now. Instead of waiting three weeks, okay, leave it there. <laughs> um, we can stop and have a look in the egg by candling them to see that if we've got a chick growing in them. That egg's definitely got a chick growing in it. And in a week's time, that little chick will make its way into the world. And hopefully we're going to see some chicks making their way into the world today. So I'm going to put that back into the incubator. Okay, there we go, and put that lid back on there. Now, we have got another incubator set up today. Um, we didn't bring both of them out into the barn because it's a little bit chilly. That's why we've got our bubble hats on. We have got our bubble <laughs> hats on today, yeah. Keeping um, our ears warm. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, we have got a camera on the other one, so fingers crossed we'll get, we'll get the nod that there's a, there's a chick hatching in the, uh, the other one at some point. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I think maybe that's we try and do a few shout outs. Yeah, okay. And uh, we'll get over to the production team over in the office and see how they're getting on because I've had word there's definitely a bit of sight of action. Oh, is that brilliant? So while Fingers we're crossed. waiting for that, let's do a few shout outs. Okay, let me have a look here, coming in from the Encounter Edu crew. So, uh, shout outs for Otter, Fox and Badger class at Witham Academy. All the children, and the school dog as well, Bumble, at RGS Springfield School in Worcester. I hope you gave us a bark there, Bumble, that would have been great. Uh, Burns Voluntary Primary School in Newton Abbott. St John the Baptist in Leicester, Butterflies, Ladybirds and Years 1 and 2 at Hollyfield Primary, Montbell Children in Year 3, Class 2 at Little Gaddesden Primary School, Four Oaks Primary School in Liverpool, Swan, Peacock and Cuckoo Class at Greenlees Primary, Year 2 Children at Dorridge Primary School. Oh, fantastic. 
Now, I'm just having a bit of a word here. Um, yeah, I think we're there. What we're going to do now, boys and girls, is we're going to head over to the other incubator. I think we've definitely got some action happening. Uh, me and Debs are going to talk through with you guys what Fingers we can crossed. see in the Let's incubator. Fingers is. crossed. Production crew, can we have a, a switch over and see if we've got something? Ooh. Fantastic. Oh, oh it's yeah, busy no, in there. it's definitely Look busy in there. We should have had the incubators the other way around, yeah, didn't we? It's always the way. There we go. Yeah. Never work with children animals. <laughs> uh, right, so what we've got happening in here is these little chicks, again, like the one that you saw in the incubator before, um, uh, all hatched at some point during the night. Oh, yeah, you can see that egg really, really shifting there. So the ones that are crowding around it are the ones that have hatched in the night. Can you see how sleepy they all are? And if you can see, oh, look, it's really moving, Josh. Um, <gasps> you can see that the egg has kind of got a crack in it that goes all the way around the edge. Because what that chick has done is it's pecked a hole with its beak. And then using its feet, it's kind of shifted itself round in the egg a little bit kind of little shimmy round and then pecked another hole then another little shimmy round oh, oh here we go yeah, definitely going on here and what that little chick does is it has to peck a hole and then another one and then another one another one until it's kind of shimmied all the way around inside that egg okay and then what, oh once it's gone far enough it knows then it doesn't need to peck anymore it just needs to probably give some big pushes so up oh, the guys don't get in the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to happen now, isn't it? Someone's going to go and stand on that egg, Josh. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh wow. look, can you see that big gap come in? So that's the chick pushing with its feet and its wings. It's not pecking anymore. Oh, the little Ooh, there's guys some cheeky friends pecking around the side. <laughs> oh, all right, mate. Um, so what it's doing, it's pushing um, with its wings. It's going to try and push that lid off now, a bit like kind of flipping the lid off a box. So it's going to try and push oh, that. Just the other ones. Oh, they've gone to sleep again. You see how? Oh, look! <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, it's definitely getting. Oh, fantastic timing! Well done, production team in the office for giving us that nod and not shutting me up before. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> so you can see now. That's its. Oh, oh yeah, dear! That's, oh, there's oh. its head. There we go. So can you see its heads popped out? The other ones. Don't worry about them walking over. It's just yeah. quite natural. It is, and it's very important as well to note when this is happening, nobody can open the incubator. It's very important it stays shut so that yeah. all the warmth is kept in there. Yeah, I mean, it's very cold in the barn, but in the office, it's probably not quite as cold. Um, but yeah, the incubator's at 37 and a half degrees, and that little chick's just hatched. Oh, it's so good when things work out on time, isn't it? <laughs> um, the others are all having a little look. Okay. Don't worry about them kind of walking on it. So at the moment, that chick doesn't know which way up is. So it's got to work out which way is feet down and head up. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, hang on. Let's see if it's going to sit up a little bit more. I don't think there's any more in there going to hatch. But that one's just hatched. That's fantastic. There, there, there's oh, his yeah. little head. Having a little wobble around, trying to work out where is, which way up is. Oh, there, there, we, go. Oh, there we go. Oh, that oh. is very cute. That's a little Andalusian. Oh. I can tell you that from just looking at it. Little Andalusian bantam. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is that little baby's first glimpse of what life is like outside the egg. Okay, it's having a little look round. And it does take a little while for them, after they've hatched, to work out which way up is. Because don't forget, that's been squished in that tiny little egg for three weeks. So it's going to take a little while for it to work out how to walk and fluff up in the incubator. Okay, oh, that's really nice footage. So, yeah, the other chicks have, see how fluffy the other ones are, because they've hatched in the night, so their feathers have had time to fluff up. This little guy's feathers will fluff up, and that means they'll work to keep the chick warm when it does come out of the incubator. It's amazing how fluffy they've got, Deb, yeah, in such yeah. a short amount yeah, of time. Yeah, so they must have hatched kind of, I don't know, in the middle of night. So maybe in about five or six hours they're fluffed up. Um, but they still need to stay in the incubator for at least 24 hours just to just to get over the, all the hassle of hatching. It's hard work for them, so they sleep, as you can see, in the incubator and, and just get their energy back before they come out. If they weren't in an incubator, Debs, if, if this was happening kind of naturally in the, in the wild or if, if Suki here had yeah. uh, decided to sit on top of there and incubate the egg herself, 
what would happen then? Would it be like this? Would she sit on top and keep them yeah, warm? Yeah, she, basically she won't move off that nest till all her chicks are fluffed and ready to go. So um, there might be several hours, you know, might be even a day in between the first and last one hatching and, and they know that they have to wait till they're all fluffy because obviously they can't take them for walk rounds. Yeah, she's got that mother, until, they, they've got that yeah, mother's instinct. Yeah, they, they, but, she, can't, she doesn't do that. So it's again, you know, 24, 48 hours on the nest. Everybody's fluffy, everybody's got their strength back, everyone's had a nice sleep underneath mum in the warm again before mum will get off the nest and, and go and venture out. Yeah, then off they go. Then off they go. But you can see the big ones that have hatched and fluffy already. They're, they're you know, they're trundling around. They're, they're pretty much, they've worked out which way up is. And, and they're yeah, they're, they're definitely already. moving about, aren't they? Yeah. And they're only five to six hours later yeah, as well. and they're zooming which around. Which is absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing how fast they get going. But that, that little fella's looking good, looking nice and strong. It's the right way up. I'm happy with that. Right, I think we're going to uh, cut back to the studio now. Um, here we are. <laughs> Uh, you can see that uh, we've still got our friends uh, down here who are uh, absolutely loving life being part of the production today. Look at them. Uh, I've never been upstaged by a chicken before, but it looks like today is going to be the day. I and I mean, and look how fantastic they are too. So what I'd like to do you to think about now, and while we're having a little bit of a calm down from uh, seeing a chick really hatching exciting, here, it was it? absolutely amazing. What a great experience for all you boys. 62,000 of you as well. That is going to be one famous chick in the future. <laughs> Better get an agent, Debs, and uh, yeah, maybe there'll be some movie roles for it going forward. Uh, I'd like you to start to think about then this life cycle that we talked about before. So you've heard Debs talk about the eggs, the chicks, the chicken. Which one do we talk about first? I'm going to pop up what I think should be the first card in your life cycle and see if you agree with me. So we've started off with an egg, okay? And that's fantastic. We've looked about how they can be in the incubator. Debs has gone through that with us. Um, they've gone into the incubator, or it could be incubated by its, its own mother hen um, with that natural process. And what we see happening next is that then, and you've just seen this right away, and this is my second card, that you will have seen a hatchling, so a newly hatched chick brand new life coming out and it's such an amazing experience to watch but those eggs yes after about three weeks will hatch then can you remember at the start boys and girls we saw some chicks and you see how fast they begin to go to that hatchling just from from today so it gets fluffy within five to six hours we showed you the chick at a week and we showed you the chick as well at two weeks old and you see how fast that they're growing you've got those lovely little chicks going around so i hope you're with me i wonder if your cards are in the same cycle as mine because at the moment we think that what might happen is actually this process might start again because after about five months you end up with some lovely chickens just like our uh, little helpers here, Suki and Missy, today, <laughs> and they they grow to full they grow to full size, and yes, after about five months, they start laying some eggs of their own, and that's why this is called a life cycle. So you can see that then it goes round and round and round. You know, we have a chicken, it has an egg, the egg incubates, it hatches, it turns into a chick, and then you get another chicken to have more eggs. So it's a very cyclical process. You call when something starts and goes round in a circle. So. Have you got your cards laid out like that, I wonder, in a life cycle? Have a look, talk to the person next to you, talk to your teacher. I'd love to know in the comments if you, how you've laid them out or send us a picture. But I think you guys, I'm sure, have done fantastically well at home. Now, I know for a fact a lot of you have been very excited about this session. Excited. So, excited. Come of on. course, excited, you yoker. Um, oh dear, yeah, let's not start that. <laughs> no. Otherwise, we'll never end. But I have got some brilliant questions coming in, both from the chat and that have been pre submitted for Debs. So, we've got about 10 to 15 minutes now with okay. Debs to have some questions. Do I need answers. Missy to help me answer them? Oh, Missy, are you going to help out? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. she's ready. Yeah, she's ready. Another star chicken out yep. there, for sure. So uh, I've got a question from uh, RGS Springfield for you, Debs. Um, does it hurt when a hen lays an egg? No, it doesn't hurt when a hen lays an egg. Um, 
everything's kind of, all their body parts are designed for that egg to come out. So it doesn't hurt when an egg lays an egg, when a hen lays an egg. They shout about it, but they're mainly <laughs> shouting, I have laid an egg, please everybody come. I have laid an egg, I am proud of myself, I have laid an egg. So some of them can be quite noisy when they do it, but there's only because that... They get excited. Oh, oh, oh there we go again. Yeah, let's stop. <laughs> What is the most number of eggs that has ever been laid by any one hen, St John's Primary House? St John's Primary, right. um, these hens might lay five eggs a week, okay? Mm -hmm. So commercial supermarket hens are designed to lay an egg every day. Yeah. So as, basically, if they lay an egg every day, that's 365 eggs a year. Ow. So it depends on how long they keep that up for. You know, let, if they live for three years, that's, you know, getting on towards a thousand And we've eggs. seen this week that actually with the lambs that we talked about on Monday, all of these are different breeds as well. So I'm guessing that must have some kind of an impact on it how does. many eggs it that does, they actually yeah. lay. Um, the breeds that I keep are all different rare native yeah. breeds, okay? And they're not, they are designed to be good utility birds and designed to be good layers, but they're not going to lay in, in a, the same fashion as their commercial bird. So m most of mine will lay perhaps five or six eggs a week. Yeah. I think Missy's thinking that it's actually more fun on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Missy's a star, what can she I is. say? Um, how long do chicks take to hatch? That was from uh, Dinglewell Infant School, Bardney Primary, St Andrew's School and Oakview Primary. They all wanted to know that. Well, I think we've just seen yeah, them, Yeah, it, it depends really. That? It's a bit like if, some, if, if uh, you know, someone goes into labour, knowing how long that baby's going to take to be born, it, they vary. Some chicks, I can literally walk out the office uh, and come back in and there's five chicks there. <laughs> Sometimes it can take hours. Down. So it's vary. Some of them really get a move on and some of them a bit slower. Usually an hour or so. Okay, um, oh, very good question here from Crick Primary School. Why don't the eggs in this, that we have in the supermarket, why don't those ones hatch? Well, a female hen, the female is the hen, and they don't need to have the cockerels or the male chickens yeah. around to lay eggs. And so the supermarkets don't keep them, okay, because the chick, a cockerel's never going to lay eggs. So they just keep the hens. And if there's no cockerels in the pen, there's no daddy chickens, then the eggs aren't so going to turn sure into that chicks. We don't have any eggs that turn into yeah. chicks. Definitely a great one. Um, let's have a look here. We've got so many amazing questions coming coming in. Well done, everyone. Really fantastic. Um, Castle Carrick Primary School want to know how does the chick know when it's time to hatch? That is a really good question. Um, it's a bit like knowing when a baby's deciding to be born. <laughs> and um, basically, what's happening is is inside the egg before they start to hatch all the air they need to breathe has to come through the shell. The shell's got tiny holes in it and it has to come through the shell. When they get to be bigger and nearly this size, they can't, they're too big and they need more oxygen in the air for that. They need more air. So I think as they get big enough and their body needs more, it's a, it's a sign they need to break out of the egg and start being to the air and yeah. start doing that. So it's probably the levels of oxygen. Levels of oxygen, they know they've got to break out. Yeah. Um, can you ever get twins in an egg? Red Squirrels class at Wellington Primary. Yes, you can get twins in an egg. Um, I don't know if you've ever had a double yolker, so you break the egg and there's two egg yolks. So if that was put into the incubator, you would end up with twins. And I have, no, I do know of a friend of mine actually put one in the incubator, and they did both hatch out by themselves. Wow. So, so it's two separate, <laughs> two separate yolks and whites inside the same shell. But if you incubate that, yes, yeah, effectively would be twins. Um, they don't always get out of the shell by themselves, but yeah, it can happen. Oh, well, this is a good one. Um, how can you tell if a chick is a boy or a girl? Oh, that is a good one. Oh, oh there that, we that's go. Missy gone. <laughs> Off goes Missy. Now, the chicks you and me were holding before, <laughs> yeah. the Vore, the black and um, uh, orange ones, we can't tell until they're about, I don't know, five or six weeks old, and the boy ones start getting a big comb on their heads. But I do have some breeds here. Let me just go and fetch them. An excellent prop. Oh, yes. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> They're all having a little hide there. Yeah. Let me get <laughs> this one. Now, some of the breeds that we keep here at HQ, like Missy, they are rare breeds which are called autosexing. And some of the breeds, you can tell whether they're boys or girls as soon as they hatch. Now, I don't know if we can get this on the camera. These are two one-week-old uh, Wellbar chicks. The same breed as Missy. And can you see the difference in colour between them? Okay, so this one's got a dark brown stripe on her head. A bit like a chipmunk. And this one is a lot paler. Okay, so the one in this hand, this one here, the paler one is a boy. 
and the other one is a girl. So these are both the same breed, but the boys and girls are different colours. Now, there are other breeds that you can do the same thing with, but with a lot of the breeds I keep, we just have to wait until the boys get that bigger comb on them, which is what happens when they're a bit older. But yeah, the, some chicks you can, and you can with these little guys. So that's the boy, and that's the girl. Okay, I'll just pop them back in, just to keep them <laughs> nice and snugly. I'll pop them back underneath. Where are you going, Missy Moo? <laughs> <laughs> Missy fancies our role in production. Fantastic. I have to say, these questions are amazing <laughs> they coming are. in. Absolutely amazing. Um, so, let, oh, let me have a look. I'm, so many of you sending me questions in. This is a brilliant one from Wilton Primary Academy. School, okay. Primary Academy. Uh, mammal babies get milk from their mothers. What do, what do the chicks eat? Um, oh, that's a good question. Because obviously um, they don't have milk. Yeah, no. Um, can I make a mistake? When a chick hatches, <laughs> when it's first born, um, they don't need to eat straight away a bit like when when we're born we need to drink milk straight away so when they hatch their tummies are full of yolk that's from inside the egg so they've got a full tummy as soon as they hatch okay when we take them out of the incubator and put them into the cage that's when they start eating their normal food and i'll show you what it looks like okay so normal baby food is mashed up stuff and this is a little bit like that so i don't know if you can see Okay, it's little tiny pellets. So what they do, they take the corn and all the good stuff that the birds need, mash it up like you would with baby food, and then make it into these little pellets. Okay, and the chicks peck at those, and that's what they get. It looks a little bit like breakfast cereal, I suppose. So that's what the chicks eat. Okay, when they're older and they go outside, um, then they can eat grass and worms and things like that. But when they're little like this, that's what they eat. So that's a really good question. Brilliant. Great question coming in now from Hollyfield Primary School. Okay. Why can't chickens fly? I mean, we've seen they can a bit, seeing as uh, Missy's okay. done a few uh, giant leaps. Oh, here she is again. Here she is again. Well, well, um, we'll but Hollyfield Primary School, they even birds if they can't fly. Yes, of course they're birds. Of course there we they're go. birds. So we can put it there and uh, we'll see if she takes off from there. Um, yes, they could go horribly wrong. Um, they, they can fly a short distance. They're not capable of flying from here to just down the road, but they can... Oh, yep. yeah. She's like, I'm definitely can fly. There we go. There we go. See, that's a professional chicken professional that can fly chicken. on demand, Debs. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so they they can they can fly a little bit, but their only reason for flying is to to, to keep away from predators at night, for example. Yeah. What they want to do is get out, uh, get off the floor because they're vulnerable yeah. there. So they in the wild they would perch in a tree or something. So they've got the ability to flutter up to a branch and up to higher and up to higher and up to higher like that. Um, but that's all they need to do. So yeah. they wouldn't fly to get away, to get somewhere no. or fly to get away from predator. They're too heavy. Yeah. Their bodies aren't designed for that. They're, they're too heavy. They're, so their wings do work. They can fly a little bit. And we've bit. just seen that, haven't and we? And we've just <laughs> seen that, okay. Um, but yeah, they'll fly into a tree or something to, to perch for the night, but they, they don't fly down the road. Right, Good we example. have got, um, boys and girls, about five minutes more left for questions. I just want to do a few more shout outs for you from the live feed. So, can we have a shout out for year one and two at Swanage, Dorset, St. Mark's Primary School? Uh, Archie, Nine, and Rowan enjoying Science Week together. Um, we've got Balderson School, Blackburn. We've got Sherwood Primary School, year two. Southway Primary School in Bognor Regis. Year four at Clover Lee Primary School. Hello from Mendel Primary. Year three at Skugness Junior Academy. Hedgehogs and monkeys at the beaches primary, and one ET, one HB, and one HS at Windsor primary, and Hatcham Temple Grove Emerald class. Fantastic. Right, I think we've got time for about five more questions, Deb. Right, so let's have on. a look. Let's have a look. Um, so, great question from uh, on the YouTube chat from Lynn. Why do the eggs have to be turned? Well, uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, Inside the egg, there's a little membrane. If you've ever broken an egg, um, there's that kind of little leathery little bit of skin inside. So the membranes are really important in the egg. And when the chick's developing, um, for the membranes to grow correctly so that the baby can get all the good things that it needs to grow out of the yolk, okay, then it has to be turned so that the membranes grow in the right way. Basically. Fantastic. If you don't turn them, they just don't grow so properly. So what's that membrane inside? That it's just a little very thin layer of skin, a kind of thing, that um, all the good things from the yolk, all the 
vitamins and the good things to help that yep. chick grow pass through and they need to grow properly and um, that's why we need to turn the egg. Excellent. Um, and uh, Lavender Primary asks, how does the chick breed in the egg? Well, before it starts to hatch, like I was saying before, the oxygen in the air goes through the tiny, tiny little holes in the shell and it absorbs it that way. Once they start to hatch and they break through with their beak in, in, into the outside, like these little guys did, they just breathe normally um, using, you know, breathe using their lungs then. Fantastic. Um, and Archie asks, um, why are the chicks yellow when they hatch? Because obviously we can see that Suki and Missy down here are definitely not very yellow. Um. Uh, well, that's a common <laughs> misconception that all chicks are yellow when they hatch. Um, I think it's because, and especially on your little thing, um, yeah. it showed the chicks being yellow. Chicks aren't all yellow when they hatch. Um, they're all different colours depending on the different breeds, like the vore we were holding were black yeah. and orange. Um, I was holding the little ones that were brown and, and lighter brown. We've got some grey ones here. Um, they tend to hatch in the similar colours than they're going to be when they're older. There's um, a couple of chicks in the other cage there that are mainly black. There'll be black chickens when they're older. So they'll all be different colours, as you can see. Um, so there's not very many chickens that hatch that are actually yellow. Okay, quick fire one. How long does a chicken live for from Kirk Hill School? Uh, the oldest chicken we ever had was 14. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so they can live quite a long time. Um, especially the way they get treated around here, pampered five-star <laughs> luxury. And she did, she still laid an occasional egg as well, bless her. Not very many, perhaps one or two a year. She'd lay it and make a big fuss and say, look what I did. How fantastic am I? And the, but yeah, they can live to quite a good old age, fantastic. really. Fantastic. And this is the final question. I hope we won't get you in any trouble. Oakdale Junior School wants to know what is your favourite oh. breed of chicken? Oh, <laughs> that is going to get me into trouble. Um, I think it would have to, I have 11 different breeds here of rare breed chicken and I love them all and I don't think I could actually get rid of any. But I think I'd have to go with the well bars, which is what Missy is, because they're just so fantastic. I'm just going to, come here. Um, <laughs> because they're lovely little birds, they're friendly as you can see, um, they're very personable, they lay eggs well. Um, and they win lots of prizes for me in the shows. <laughs> oh, um, fantastic. Missy herself being a <laughs> national champion chicken. A national champion national chicken. National champion chicken. How can you beat that? Yeah, so I think it would probably have to be these little well bars, because I, I, it's very difficult. I feel sorry for the others that aren't here, but yes, probably <laughs> these. <laughs> and I think the final question that I think we agreed at the start that we probably couldn't answer was that what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because I think the answer for us... It's the egg the egg yeah but I mean it could have been the chicken that laid it so uh, well the problem is is yeah mm. dinosaurs laid egg before chickens and dinosaurs are the relatives of chickens aren't mm. they so the eggs were around before chickens were so I, I'm going for egg we're going egg, egg. we're going egg, egg here. every you, time you heard it here first yeah from, uh, yeah from education Deb says it's egg, so <laughs> it must be now. <laughs> Right, thank you so much for joining us this morning, everybody. It's been fantastic to share the whole of this experience. I, th I hope you agree. It experience. Was experience. Um, <laughs> that it was an absolutely exceptional experience, in fact. Well done. Um, what we'd like you to do now is uh, yeah, still remember that you can tweet us, show us what you're doing. Um, we're just about to pop up on the screen an activity that we'd love you to get involved in as well after this lesson. So we would like you to design your own incubator. So you've heard all about and seen some of Deg's Deg's. I'm getting Who's really she? wobbled up in the head now. Um, I've obviously got far too excited with chickens today, but um, all of the different incubators that Debs has here. You've also seen how what the chickens do themselves. Missy is just flying in front of me while I'm trying to talk to you and explain this activity. But do please show us your uh, exceptional designs. Send them in on Twitter, on email. Um, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing yeah. them. Um, Debs as well is at Eggucation at, uh, on, on Twitter. Um, you can also visit her website. It says www eggucation.co.uk you can find out even more about her chickens uh, you might even be able to persuade your teacher to get one of these incubators in your very own classroom and we would also love to see you um, entering our farmvention competition that's www.farmvention.com um, so all that remains from me 
I would absolutely love to say thank you to all of you for joining in with us this morning. A huge thank you to Debs, um, who I'm sure you can agree has been such a great host, and to Missy and Suki as well, who are still <laughs> scratching down around down here. They're definitely the stars of the show, celebrity chickens. And I am so excited, and I hope you will join us this Friday. Remember, there's no live session tomorrow uh, to join Thebe the Vet because I would love for all of you to join us and to become farm veterinary students for the day. So that's us signing off from just outside the Peak District here in Ed Education HQ, and we will see you on Friday. Enjoy the rest of British Science Week. See you later. Bye-bye.